This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, then cheers, Grace Halbig. Cheers, memory hard. That's right. I've got a big ass thing of antioxidant loaded smart water, baby. Wow. That is intelligent liquid. You know, I bought it yesterday because, was it yesterday? I don't remember. (laughs) To be like, let's keep hydrating. And then I didn't open it for 24 (laughs) hours. It's it's vintage now. I am like a fine wine. It's been waiting. It doesn't taste like a fine wine or antioxidant. So I'm into it. Cute. Wow. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. (laughs) Once again, we're in full merch. Dinner Planet. Both in full merch. Go to GFTBA if you'd like any of our uh, This Might Get Weird podcast merch. And there's some other options on there. Look at you plugging merch. Out of the gate like a goddamn pro. Well, you know why? Why? Because I have a new piece of, not my merch. What? In my wardrobe from the weekend. Oh, you guys. We Let's just get it. into it, shall Let we? Let the people want to know. The people have been all up in the comments, all up in the tweets yeah. to hear about our Vegas weekend. We went to Las Vegas. Nevada. You've only, you only heard us talk about it last week, the week before. <laughs> Look, I'm going to be honest. I don't have a lot going on in my life. Um, the first thing. We went and saw Katy Perry. We went, we went and saw Katy Perry, you guys. <sighs> and can I just tell you, first, let's set up the scene of what we looked like. Well, you heard last week that the talk of wigs uh, being purchased with mm-hmm. the possibility of bringing and or using. I'll be honest. I thought the wigs were really cute. I, I got very shy <gasps> about committing to the longevity of wig wearing. Oh. When we you, got to Vegas, I was like, oof. Just the idea. I tried it on for like well, a you second. Have so much hair. Because so much hair. the wig, putting a wig on over your, putting a wig cap on to you yeah. is basically forming a follicle helmet. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> and, and for me, I'm just like, zoop it oops like it's up there. Who cares? <laughs> so you got nervous. But luckily, our hotel was also the venue. Oh. So I was like, girl, we got to rock them wigs. Yeah. And then if the show ends or if you like have a moment where you freak out, so you just go up to your room real quick. Well, the thing that actually kind of gave me courage was we got there the first night. First of all, walked into the resorts world where we stayed, which, which can't we did, recommend enough. We did not get free rooms. We did not no. get hooked up. We are legitimately saying there is a different vibe. I walked in and it smelled like pigs in a blanket. And I was like, I'm home, baby. See, I walked in and we were checking in and I saw in the corner. I told you about this. I think this is this all. This is my one complaint about Resorts World. Okay. I looked in the corner and there was like a little picket, tiny picket fence. Oh, yeah. And AstroTurf and a dog house. And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shit. We've got one of those hotels that has a dog mascot. Oh, my God. That's exactly what it looked like it should have been. It should have been that. And then I jump over the, like, velvet rope from where I'm, like, we're in line to check in. And I'm, like, dog. And immediately beeline it. Like, almost knocking someone over. I get there. It's a robot dog. Oh, Gosh. Luckily, it's like one of the cute ones. It's not like one of the ones that look like they're coming to murder for the police. <laughs> yeah, like they're actually like the ones in like the Boston, uh, I feel like police force. Well, up in, up in Boston at MIT, I guess that they're, they're doing police. all of the studies or programs with the robot dogs and they look like they're going to evolve and murder all of us. If I was an MIT student, mm-hmm. I would not be stoked about how many robot dog insects are like walking around i don't care if they're doing backflips they're dancing i don't care if they're dancing (laughs) like at any point you could be walking out of class and one of those guys take you down yeah i don't know if i would like it but maybe if i had the brain that got me into mit i might be a different person you might be able to rationalize that that wasn't gonna happen (laughs) me me goes robot dog climbs tree immediately um no it had a little robot dog so i was nervous about this hotel because i was like who who are they pandering to? What adult know. is coming to hang out in Vegas and would be more excited about that than a Pomeranian? I mean, if you have to give a note, give a note. I that didn't, was my one note. I didn't even notice the the dog. I was so enamored with the, the smell of pigs in a blanket. I walked in. We waited in line to check in. I was just like, this is such a familiar smell, Elliot. What is it? And he wasn't bothered. He was already looking at the casino. And I was like, this is, you got to help me. I'm having like a moment wow. where this is so familiar. And then I was like, pigs in a blanket. Damn. Oh, how comforting. Which is like, I was like, that's what I plan to be symbolically all weekend a little pig in a blanket, a little pig in a blanket. <laughs> you talking about pigs in a blanket love them perfect uh, food 
I'm now really craving a pig's in a bucket. Right? <laughs> so I, well, it was such a specific smell, but I'll say related to wigs, the first night that we got there, we went uh, out to dinner, but before we went out to dinner, obviously Katy Perry concert was happening in the hotel yes. and I saw a bunch of people at a bar with wigs as if they were going to the concert. So I was like, ah, full perm- permission granted. Okay. Once I see it in action, yeah. it doesn't seem as ridiculous or as like, you know, or like we're unique at all or unique at <laughs> all. I was like happy to be a sheep with these beautiful ladies doing the wig party. They were good looking sheep. They were beautiful sheep. No, I feel like at any point in Vegas, there's girls in wigs because it's yeah. like, you're Vegas. It's like your escape is um, I'm a different person. Yeah. Easy moment. I did see some people were tweeting at us their relief or even like comments on Instagram that they were nervous. The wigs you got were a lot more high quality uh, than yes. I think you set it up. We, yeah. Like I thought I was going to have like granted this wig was flammable. But yeah. I was like a nervous. It was. It was. Sh- I thought you were going to have really, really, hours. really, yeah. really shitty ones. They weren't like Party City wigs. No, the wigs that I wear for cosplay the, wigs are aunt's characters. Far worse. <laughs> if, far worse. <laughs> there was a moment in Vegas where I was like, "Should we wear our aunt's wigs? Should I just get out the <laughs> Billy Ray Cyrus mullet?" <laughs> and really jam out. But maybe our aunt's characters need to go to Vegas one weekend. They and really play the do. slots. They really do. Which, okay, oh, first God. of all, oh my Katy God, there's Perry still so much to talk about. Is amazing. We're jumping all over. I'm gonna jump all over. My biggest success this yeah. weekend, and Elliot's too, I'll speak for him. Okay. Was that we got to finally show you the silly, stupid, and absolutely wonderful world of ponies. Yeah. I <laughs> Look, the thing is... My favorite game ever. It, I didn't know they existed. Yeah. For you guys listening, Grace has always talked about the lore of the ponies. Yeah. And that it's like little toy ponies... That run on a racetrack about the size of a living room table. Yeah, it's like a dining room table dining room, with yeah. a globe, uh, with like clear over it. Like mm-hmm. the word, like, tr- what is it? Trouble, boggle, something like that. Yeah. And but I didn't realize how realistic these little yeah. fuckers were going to be. Uh-huh. I know that's why I was like they're like miniature toy ponies <laughs> and they I couldn't called, visualize I think, fortune cup or good fortune something like that and they run around the track one way you bet on them they line up again and they run around the track the other way and they keep on doing it as long as you sit there you guys huh? we sat there uh we sat there in various time frames throughout the weekend <laughs> that was the one game we played and I couldn't have been happier uh. because it's true I think it's the thing about gambling that gets me is that I get nervous. I'm going to fuck up the vibe. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If oh, yeah. I don't like sitting at table games no. where everyone clearly is confident in what they're doing or confident in the fun they're having. Or just in the sense that you don't know if you're going to sit next to someone. And I feel like gambling is one of those very superstitious. Yeah, true. And I remember the first time I no, where was I? Oh, I was in the Bahamas with Michael Buckley. Classic. I think that's where I was. <laughs> I'm not sure. And I was like feeling myself and like getting out money and gambling and losing it all. Yeah. You know, like we were both going through breakups. Uh. So but I remember coming up and like doing something at blackjack and a person without saying anything like gave me a look like I fucked up the flow of the whole table and oh. like took his chips and walked off. Oh, shit. And so I always have this fear of doing table games yeah. that like I am going to somehow ruin someone's time by like not being as serious about it i don't know the etiquette and yeah. so i'm worried that like the hand motions that you give for like stay or hit or anything yes. that i'm gonna mess it up and i'm not allowed to take it back it feels very third base coach <laughs> yeah, yeah like exactly. all these different it's secret language so i don't like playing those and then you know you can sit down and you can do the electronic ones or the slots mm-hmm. that's boring yeah these ponies these ponies gave me a thrill and you know what else it gave me Horse racing energy without the um, being bad to animals. It's perfect game. It's the perfect game. <laughs> it it inspires a childlike wonder. Uh-huh. It brings a sense of silly. You're still gambling and it lets you gamble so lightly, like 25 cents. So you can sit there and feel like you're making big bets, but you're really losing a dollar fifty, maybe. Uh, 
Chip and I liked it so much that when Grace and Elliot had to stay in during the afternoon <laughs> to do schoolwork, Chip and I were like four drinks deep and walked over to Circus Circus and played their table. I know. You told me you're like, we just play ponies at Circus Circus. I was like, I can't believe they have it at Circus Circus. That's so great. Crushed it. It was well, so we fun. went over there to play DDR. Yeah. But you know. now that you know about the ponies, it's like uh, I don't want a ton of people to know about it. But well, I also what are we doing right now. Should I don't we know. Take this out? I don't want to stand alone in how a much stand alone I, pony. I don't want to stand alone in my love for the ponies because I think everyone could really benefit from how surprisingly silly and fun they are. Well, we had a great time yeah. doing the most light version of gambling. That's the best part. Is like that I, I lost less than a hundred bucks. Same. I came back and I, I might was have like, lost more of Chip's money, but I, <laughs> I, like I have cash in my wallet like on I, this flight. Back. I spent more on one double vodka tonic yep. at the actual concert than I spent on gambling all weekend. Yeah. No, it was fantastic. I should we? First of all, in addition to wigs, yeah. When we're talking outfits, oh yeah. Please to report, Chip's peacock tie came in. Oh, that was crisis averted. It came in the day before. I just don't know how he would have been able to show his face at a Katy Perry concert without a Katy specific tie. My gosh, I know it would have been embarrassing for all of us to Mm -hmm. be associated with him without that tie. Also, shout out to uh, (laughs) the two people that came up as we were walking out of the concert that I just hear out of the corner of my ear. Chip, so glad that tie made it in time, man. (laughs) I forget your name, but you approached us and it yeah. made our friggin' night. I was not in a play. I needed food so bad at that point that I was like, thank you for liking our podcast. I'm in a place where I should walk away from you so you don't feel overwhelmed by how unstable I am right oh, now. Oh, see, I'm an always in a place of I am the main character. So for me, I don't even compute like how niche and special that is. I'm just like, yeah, of course. Of course, everyone knows what I talk about all the time, right? (laughs) Um, No, that was so fun. I think we should talk a little bit about the concert itself. Yeah. Okay. Because. How do you describe it? Well, the theme is play. And basically, it is a combination of Katy Perry being in her own toy story where like everything around her comes to life and chairs are talking and toilets are talking and mixed with the back half with that's like just straight up Vegas showgirl style. Yeah, it's an interesting combination of themes and styles. <laughs> what we what we mean is at one point there's a giant toilet on stage mm-hmm. and up from the depth of the porcelain bowl comes a massive turd puppet. Yeah. With eyes and one tooth made of corn. <laughs> made of corn. And they have a dialogue and they sing together uh and it's it's like a dream I feel like I've had in all of my stomach, you know, problems that yeah. I've had that I'm and like, I think I've passed out and had this hallucination before. No, I, Katie, I adore her. Love I love it. her. She like, loves to be stupid. She loves to be stupid. We love it. But there were just a couple key moments during the concert where Katie did what she does best, which is just take it a little too into cringe. Oh, yeah. You know, the second moment. What? She was singing. Oh, the mask. She was no. She was uh-huh. singing. This is a part of me that you never gonna. And she was dancing, and the music video was like her at like boot camp and whatnot. Yeah. So on stage, it's her with like the toy soldiers with like combs as like artillery. Yeah. And it's very cute. But at one break during that song, she just shoves in a clap for Ukraine. Uh, yeah. This was the first five minutes of the concert, and. Everyone started clapping, but everyone was also looking like, I don't know that this is the response that's helpful, but we understand that you, I guess, feel pressured to make a comment publicly about it. So we don't all feel like we're living in this weird, you know, privileged utopian bubble with you. It was weird because the thing is, bless her. The thing is, is that like, I understand going like, I need to say something. Let me just, I would have rather her taken five minutes between songs. Yeah. To, to talk about like we're thinking of the people or like give us places fi- to donate or like before <laughs> firework yeah. or like something that like made sense. But I was, was just the like opening of all the of a sudden you're just you're clapping for the music and then you and then it 
you're clapping for Ukraine. Yeah. And it, I would just, I was like, Jinda, just donate a portion of our tickets. Yeah, it did make me feel kind to an of organization. Like shittily aware of like, oh, I'm here in Vegas watching this and oh gosh, and Katie, the land I of feel, excess. I don't, my claps aren't going to do anything, Katie. My claps aren't going to do anything right now, Katie. But I guess, uh, I don't know. If you're like me and you think that cooking at home should be easy, fun, and affordable, then you gotta try HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm fresh produce that arrives within a week so you get all the convenience and quality without any of the trips to the grocery store or food waste. No stores, no waste. What's not to like? HelloFresh has fit and wholesome recipes for satisfying and nutritious meals that you can feel good about with six recipes per week to choose from, including low calorie and carb conscious options. And speaking of options, they offer 50 menu and market items to choose from each week, including veggie, family friendly, and gourmet options. Obviously, you know, big fan of HelloFresh. Last night I made pub style shepherd's pie. That was just so delicious. I felt like I was at the pub and I was on my couch. Again, what's not to like? If you're interested, go to HelloFresh.com slash TMGW16 and use code TMGW16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash TMGW16 and code TMGW16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. America's number one meal kit. Bomba's mission is simple. Make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. So when you buy Bomba's, you're also giving to someone in need. Bomba's designed their socks, shirts, and underwear to be the clothes you can't wait to put on every day. Everything they make is soft and seamless, tagless, has luxurious, cozy feel to it. They're made from super soft materials like merino wool, pima cotton, and even cashmere, which makes them the perfect cozy layers. There's even a pair of Bomba socks for everything you do. We're talking sports and activities that keep you moving. Bomba t-shirts are made with thoughtful features and invisible seams, soft fabrics, and the perfect weight so they hang just right. Bomba's underwear, oh, are you kidding me, has a barely there feel with a second skin support that might make you forget they're even there. In a good way. And did you know that socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the three most requested clothing items at homeless shelters? That's why Bomba's donates one for every item you buy. So go to bombas.com slash TMGW and get 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash TMGW for 20% off. Bombas.com slash TMGW. Uh, but I did appreciate that she did have some uh, light sociopolitical mask commentary. Oh my God, that was so weird. And that's exactly what you said verbatim out loud oh. in silence <laughs> in the middle of the show. Okay, hold on, you guys. Imagine this. She has all these. Oh, she has all these oversized puppets come up. One comes up that's like a cloth raggedy mask. Masky. Masky. Talks to her. I feel like this was like a 15 minute bit. It went on forever. Yeah, this was the portion where I did lose the plot. Yes. <laughs> and it was you were already hanging on yeah. by fingernails. So she talks to Masky and basically tells him to go away. And we're sick of him. And and while, Masky lost his job. Yes. I think like her point was. Guys, I'm over COVID and every and yeah, we want you to get vaccinated, whatever. But it came off anti masky It was the message was mixed. And I was like, is this a rough draft of this part of the show? Because maybe we need yes. to tighten up the narrative. A little it was bit. exactly that. It was first drafts where we were like, I see the plot points. I don't think we're nailing them. She does this whole thing and then she sends them away and then she goes to a concentration and it's dead silent. And you just went. That was weird, Katie. And <laughs> at, like you literally like you just did now said your thoughts out loud and no one responded to you at all. What? I said, I've got some laughs. Everyone around me was dead. Side. Well, that's because there was a family around us. I heard yeah. like laughs and some people to my left be like, uh huh. I think everyone. I at needed that point, to say what the people were thinking. Everyone was ready for the next song. Uh, yeah, it was not a good place for a silent beat, which is yeah. why I said, that was weird, Katie. <laughs> I had to say what I was thinking. I hope they took the note. Yeah, it was uh, a longer show than I thought it would be. Oh. And didn't get to roar till the very end. Till the very that end. That was a bit of the bummer for me. Was oh, that really? I wanted roar a little earlier on. I think I was just like kind of, you know, reach my peak mid show and mm. then was like coming down. Also, she brought a couple people on stage to do like walk off, stance yes. off. There was a person in a corset that was 
truly falling out. Truly of the nipples door. everywhere. It nipples was. were everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> And so there was a, was a lot, lot going a lot, on. A lot to take in yeah. on top of like us being a little drunk and stoned. Yeah. So, really a fun but time I, though. I, I loved it. Same. I had a I great mean, time. If we could extract the the turd. Pu- you know, it wasn't even the fact that there was an eight foot tall turd. Hmm. It was the corn tooth. The corn tooth was flopping all around <laughs> as the Muppet talked, too. So it gave it a lot more like complexity and dimension. And it made me feel like. Oh, that corn's vulnerable. That thing's going to fly off. Yes. But what I thought is I was looking at that turd going, you telling me this person ate one piece of corn? (laughs) I'm sorry. Is this our nachos that we had at Rainforest Cafe in Orlando that had one piece of corn on it? And we were like, do I win something? There was one piece of corn hanging on like a loose tooth. Yeah. It was just a little bit of mixed messaging of like corn tooth, uh, pile of shit and then my grandmother was a seamstress in las vegas so it's generationally successful that i'm here and all that Uh, i was like ah i'm still getting over the corn tooth shit that was just talking hard to support the dreams of your grandmother right now katie ah so (laughs) overall fantastic overall a fantastic show i think she has a, a few rusts to polish and you know I, but man, I was exhausted for her. I can't. I mean, just right? to do uh, singing live, she sounded great to me. The uh, in consideration of how many moving parts literally there were. However, I watched her and I was exhausted for her. And then like it wasn't even a quarter of the dancing Britney Spears did. Yeah, and Britney true. did it for like five fucking years or but something. She, didn't sing live didn't she oh that's true katie yeah. actually sang I and she like, sounded great she sounded great i mean i would get exhausted just quacking my dumb mouth here for 40 minutes <laughs> the second we hit a, a certain minute I, I like shut down like a robot so yes i totally agree yeah but damn it was a great time and i felt so bad because chip had to go straight to work Ooh. so that sweet man Woke up and like headed to the airport at 7 a.m. Well, i kept slept, sleeping until 10 30. i know i woke up and i looked at elliot i was like chip's plane is taking off right now yeah. that's unbelievable to unreal me. <laughs> well so we headed back the next day yeah and uh y'all we flew spirit yeah which and- elliot and i took out there and it wasn't bad at all for us on the way out really yeah it was totally fine but it was a short flight and we were just excited to be going to vegas you, we weren't the tired coming back from vegas but also because we flew from burbank yeah you were flying with pre a whole plane of pre-worn out people like, you know, yeah. good, good old Los Angelinos yeah. headed to Vegas <laughs> like on the way back, man. A Sunday flight from Vegas back to L.A. is uh, depressing to look around. <laughs> it's a rough go at it for sure. Like everyone Myself is, included. Everyone is clamoring to find an outlet to charge their phone. It was rough. You boarded before me. Yeah, we had boarding before you. You you had zone one. We had zone. Well, I, I was did zone the, four. I learned my fucking- lesson on the way out. I uh, bid to get like better seats on Spirit and they separated Elliot and I put us in exit row. So I was like overly conscious of making sure that we had OK seats together. I was in a middle seat on the way out. So, which, which like for an hour was fine. I no watched deal. Top Chef on my phone. I had a great time. They're all good. But the thing is, is about Spirit Airlines is they charge everything. for everything. everything. And I knew they did. But I think the one other time I flew them, it was like $30 for this or that. Yeah. I was like, OK, I'm going to book Spirit on the way back because the still insane. It was still like that leg of the flight was 250 yeah. and like Delta was 400. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. But anyway, so I was like, oh, fuck it. I'll do, I can deal with it. It's just an hour. Then I had to check two bags, mm-hmm. little guys. That was one fifty. Yeah, to check two bags. Yeah, to bring a carry on costs like fifty dollars each for us. Well, yeah. there we go. I mean, first of all, I'm like so bloated. I was like, "Are you gonna charge me? Are you gonna like weigh me <laughs> yeah, for carrying on so much extra water weight?" <laughs> so, but anyway, you board before me, and yeah. I'm at the gate. And right when you go on, there is a cur. Buffle. Oh no, I missed all of this. I know because I was like, I want to text Grace, but I'm not going to. You, when we landed back in LA, you did say, I got some stuff to talk about on the podcast. So I haven't Ooh. asked. Oh, so I'm sitting there waiting, minding my biz. Uh-huh. 
uh, finishing that Bloody Mary you bought me because I took it to the gate. <laughs> so anyway, I was in there and then I just, a woman is at the gate and clearly they are charging her for a carry on for her purse. Oh shit. Okay. So she has like a backpack and yeah. then she has like a bigger purse and they're like, you can only have one carry on. And she's mm-hmm. like, I know this is my carry on. This is my purse. Oh shit. And there clearly been a big disagreement. <sighs> This woman just turns to the whole gate like like she is a prophet, holds up her big ass purse and just goes, raise your hand if this is a purse. (laughs) And everyone is like, what is happening? Oh, no, she put it to a public vote. She goes, I need they're trying to charge me as a carry on. This is a purse. I flew it with it out here as a purse. Raise your hand if it's a purse. And like no one does anything. Oh Maybe like two people or something. And then she starts a chant. For and just, her purse. And, and it's just purse. Purse. <laughs> purse. Purse. And no one is joining in, right? You thought I was embarrassing to tell Katie it was weird. She was like, part. And, and me and I'm like making eye contact with people. And they're just like, this oh woman has God. lost it. Truly, I think it was like the difference. I mean, it was a difference in like 50 bucks or something. Yeah. You know? So I understand it. But she for the next. I mean, that was just boarding group one. Oh for the God. next 30 minutes, I heard the word purse more than I've heard. And my oh entire my life tripled. Oh my God. She was taking votes. Oh she was starting chants. And like they would they would not. They were like, no, you have to sorry, that's a carry on. You have to check one of them. Can I tell wow. you how what makes me feel bad? What? I do agree it was a purse. I just was not trying to get involved. <laughs> you know. I was not trying to get in that, but that was it's like, okay, let me save a little oh. money on spirit to deal with anarchy. Wow. Yeah, a, oh, a Sunday flight back from Vegas. I don't want to make my opinions known about anything, ma'am. Please let me just it go was on terrible. my way. <laughs> and me keeping my mouth shut happened two more times on that flight. What happened to you? Did more anything times? weird happen to you on this flight? No, again, I was uh, I was ignorant. reading stuff I had to read yeah. for school. Yeah. And also like you were with Elliot and whatnot. And I yeah, was just I was like. Trying hungover anxiety feeling bad my like boyfriend had to get up so early like is the world mad at me well you were yeah you were nervous that you wouldn't be able to check your bag in time because when i I checked both bags because i was like i'm not dealing with the shit that lady's dealing with and them saying you know it's wrong so then i printed i paid for it and then only one baggage tag came out and then it said printer error oh great and i was like uh ma'am come over here and she clearly didn't know it was up yeah and she was like um if you go to the line to drop your baggage which was really long uh they can probably do it and i went probably or like can they do it because i don't want to wait that whole time and then they tell me no and so i i let her make me go to the shorter (laughs) line anyway that was that i digress and then tsa pre wasn't open it was wild oh oh and then the security guy at tsa pre was just like where you headed i was like california he's like southern california oh i'm trying to get there with my family to go to sea world and i was like well let me bite my tongue off to not tell this man how bad sea world is as an organization Uh, sir what are your thoughts on purses yeah right so anyway so I get past. She's still arguing, by the way, about the purse when I board the plane. That's tough. Yeah. I'm actually not even sure she got on it. Yeah. You know, I don't know. No what idea. You do. So I'm walking. <laughs> I'm walking to my seat and I pause uh, to put something in the overhead compartment. And there's a couple that's going to be sitting in front of me. Yeah. And I just hear him look at her and go. This morning, you could have chosen to be anything, and you chose to be a bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. Ah! 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 What a tantalizing oh, line. The exact line, you woke up and could have chosen to be anything, but you chose to be a bitch. Oh, my God. You walked into a soap I opera. I was like, oh, my my yes that sounds like a housewives tagline <laughs> i know truly i woke up and i could have chosen to be anything and, and I, I chose, chose to, to be, be a, a bitch. bitch so anyway so i sit down and i immediately like buckle up here we go yeah, right yeah. unfortunately he was not having it he put on his noise canceling headphones and she just stewed you know yeah you just feel the energy meanwhile i've got uh like an older couple behind me and then this young guy sits down beside them 
and, I, and I'm already like, this is going to be the most annoying hour of my life. He just sits down. And he's like, how are you doing? And they're like, hey. And, you know, they're trying yeah. to be like cool, young, like saying hey to him. He goes, I want big. So like when they come around, we're doing shots. <laughs> and and he, they were like, ha, 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 ha. He was like, no, no, no. We're doing shots, though. When they come around, what do you want? They Jack, don't, you want? They, they don't, don't serve alcohol. serve anything on these flights. It's a one hour friggin' flight. Yeah. He talked about doing shots with them <gasps> like a like a broken like oh, no. parrot. Oh, no. For the next 20 minutes, you could hear their voices stop playing along and they're yeah. just like huh, yeah i mean yeah and and he'll do one fine meanwhile i just want to turn around and be like there will be no shots yeah this isn't gonna happen you don't have to agree to anything so <laughs> instead he just starts word diarying oh. about his en- entire trip like every single detail like get a then podcast me, then buddy me and, <laughs> then me and my boys went to sapphires the strip club we lived it up wow. he was living like it was his like it you know like his boy was getting married and then i won this amount wow. he kept going but the part that killed me is like this looked like a perfectly like kind of sweet square couple yeah and then he just goes so then we went to C- top golf and like we were on hella drugs <laughs> i was just like <laughs> what like could you imagine if this flight was five hours long <laughs> Oh, God, he would have gotten himself, like, arrested just by admitting everything <laughs> that's gone on. My phone battery was low, and, like, wow. I, but, and I needed the noise, ca- I needed to listen to something, and you could tell the oh. sweet guy beside me could feel my energy. Yeah. He literally just went into his bag, pulled out a backup charger, and handed it to me. Wow. And I said, I was like, what? what an and, angel. and he goes, do you want to charge your phone? And I was like, <gasps> yeah, I do. And he goes, all right. Like, did, wow, what I didn't an angel. ask anything. And then I get it up to like 80% and yeah. what I feel like we're descending and I hand it back. I just take it out and hand it back. He goes, you can use it till we land. I was like, no, I'm good. Thank you. This is like incredibly nice. I felt like Where we were did like he come from? in it together because yeah. we were both surrounded by the crazy that he was like, you're going to want your phone. Oh, my God. That was my one hour flight. That sounds chaotic. It was, man. It but really was. You've made it back. You've survived. <sighs> We've survived. <sighs> if you have the chance to go, highly recommend. Oh, yeah. Could not recommend Katy Perry enough. I did see an article today about her that she won a copyright infringement lawsuit for yeah. Dark Horse. <gasps> yeah. That there Who was, was coming for her? A 2008 Christian rap song called Joyful Noise. By rapper Marcus Gray, she was originally supposed to pay him two point eight million dollars. She appealed and won the appeal. So Fuck she didn't. Yeah. He tried to appeal oh, no. her appeal. Went to Katie. Damn. Yeah. I know. Good for her. Crazy. What is it called? It's called Joyful Noise. Are you ready for ready for <laughs> a joyful joy- noise? <laughs> a joyful noise. I'm like, yeah, get a mashup going. Didn't she start out as a Christian? God artist? is coming back. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Dark Horse might actually be a Christian anthem. Who knows? Well, yeah, she like you said, she did start off as one of them's, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I think from the last documentary we saw, she was one of them. Y'all know good and well that when I talk to you about Audible, I freaking love it, okay? I love nothing more than sitting down to an audio book or, you know, a brand new original when I'm on a long road trip or even reading parts of a book and then listening parts of the audiobook when I'm in the car. Yes, I love to double dip. And that's because Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre. They've got bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries, thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, all kinds of things that you can listen to on your your mental health walks every day. They've also got originals from top celebrities, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. I don't mean to brag, but I myself am an Audible member, so I choose up to one title per month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Plus, members get full access to the growing collection of audiobooks, originals, and guess what, y'all? I know you like podcasts. You're listening to this one. They got podcasts too. So new members can try Audible for free for 30 days. Isn't that exciting? Give it a shot. What have you got to lose besides yourself in a book as you take a stroll through the spring air? So go to audible.com slash TMGW or you can even text TMGW to 500 500 to get started with Audible. 
If you've got back-to-back meetings and errands to run and chores to take care of, then what's the secret to clearing your to-do list? Uh, A little help from DoorDash. You can get dinner, household essentials, and everything on your grocery list delivered. Get what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash. Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. You can get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. If you're craving late night ice cream, I do every night and also all day long. Forget that one key ingredient for dinner, or maybe you just need to stock up for the week with DoorDash. Get everything in one app. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and the one and only Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. For a limited time, you can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code TMGW. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code TMGW. One more time, that's code TMGW for 25% off your first order with DoorDash, subject to change. Terms apply. Can I show you something that really made me laugh? Yeah. So someone DM'd me on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> DM'd me on Instagram. On yes. the Instagram. Okay, ma'am. <laughs> she d- um, direct messaged me on the Instagram. And it was one of those, like, let me see the like the people I don't follow, but let me see so I can like repost myself kind of thing. Okay. So I go in there. General. <laughs> ge- general. Well, because we have general and primary, but I don't think everyone has general and primary. I have no right? idea. I don't know. Um, but so I go in there and someone sends me a message and is like, oh, girl, imagine my surprise when this popped up on Grinder in New York. What? It's a picture. Someone <gasps> is, is using Chip's photo. And is that you? But you're uh, blacked out of the it's, photo? It's my photo, but they have put an, a <gasps> huge black square over my face. We're holding margaritas. And then his oh name God, is name. Hung Large 33. <laughs> and it's a picture of Chip. And this is on Grinder. On Grinder in New York City. Who knows how many more they're floating around. But I looked at Chip. Oh, where were we? We were like getting brunch when yeah. you and Elliot were doing work. And I was like, babe. You're you've officially made it. Truly, people are using your photo on Grinder <gasps> and wow. literally putting a black box over my wow. face. Wow! Uh, I mean, congratulations to both of you. Thank you so much. You've made the cut of being cut out of a Grinder photo. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> That's beautiful. It cracked me up. Chip was like, "Look at that." <laughs> and now I want to see how many more photos of Chip are being used. On That's what I'm site. saying, you guys. If you go on Grinder and you see a photo of my boyfriend, please screen grab it to me. Please. Don't make up know. a fake account. We don't want people using his photo. But yeah, oh, wild, huh? Good for him. I mean, wait till they see the photos of him with the peacock tie. Oh, people are going to be ripping that to use left and right. Oof, oof. Um, oh, quick update on the woman huh. with the fart license plate. Oh, I was in North. That's in North Carolina. North Carolina. Right? I was just looking oh uh, right before we started recording, and apparently she is allowed to keep the license plate, but she's not allowed to put it on her vehicle. What? What a rip! Yeah, they said literally a rip. Literally, uh, they said that they they've refused fart for other people, so they can't make the exception for her. So it's not like the first time someone in, I guess, North Carolina. But or I Asheville. also feel like rules are there to be changed you know like yeah. there appeal that katie did thank you <laughs> be inspired by katie um man you just yeah. get to keep it yeah she just gets to keep it and they said because she had created the um you know fart community to prove the legitimacy of it they oh, had right, the Asheville trails yeah, they held an event on sunday a dozen people showed up and they plan to continue holding fart events so go support your local <laughs> fart fandom i cannot out in Asheville. cannot wait to go to Asheville and join the fart community right absolutely oh my god i'm sorry i got so worked up during that I flight know. time that i'm like catching my breath well i'll tell you something else that's coming up okay um or that's going on right now <sighs> this is kind of added oh no. to that pile of 
companies doing weird stuff with products. Uh, um, but this is apparent. Okay. This is, this is ultimately good. Proceeds of this are going to Feeding America. This is Hidden Valley Ranch has created a diamond ring. Have you seen yeah. this? Okay. I've heard of this. Is there ranch in the ring? Yeah. So it's expertly created okay. by a professional diamond maker in a lab. The diamond was made by heating Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning to 2,500 degrees Whoa! and then crushing the output beneath 400 tons of pressure, taking five months total to create. It is up for auction right now, and I think it's over March 17th, and all the proceeds go to Feeding America. Let me click on the auction. Okay. It's up to $13,000 and $13,050. I am into wow. this. Wow. This is the first one I'm into because here's why. There's actual ranch in it. And so yeah. you're making it beautiful. There was no baloney in your mask. Which was good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that worked out in my favor. <laughs> but still, like if they'd have found like baloney actually has hydrating properties or something well, and, and put it in. Like there's actual ranch in the diamond. Yeah. What's the other one where we were like? Oh, the beans. Tiny baked mints. beans. Mints. Yeah. Again, you know what I think those should be? Hmm. I don't know if I said it before. Those should be tiny tums. Or yeah. like, or beanos, or sup, yeah. something that has to do with it. Yeah, I agree. Or like bean flavored candy. I Just, mean, talk to the Jelly Bellies or whoever. Oh what's God, the jelly beans going nuts. What's the latest with that taco truck? A lot box. of people message us that they. I know. One, they. Uh, really situated their stance on why they like jelly beans. So thank you guys they, so yeah, many they of really you out like, there. How dare you? Really like jelly beans and genuinely and sincerely explain to me why you do or why your mother does. <laughs> and two, yeah, yeah, yeah. People were like, "Don't you care for the come for the jelly bean community?" I know, sorry, I didn't. I meant no harm. Uh, and two that they had seen them out in like targets and stuff. This we gotta try it. Uh, ring is called carrots and ranch. That's. The fun title. Oh, of it. now it? I get it. Carrots, C A R A T S. Wow, I like it. I like it. Doing um, it. Chip sent me something recently okay. that I thought was fascinating, and it, I think I mentioned this to you in Vegas, but it was it's a map of the most like the things most common dreams are about in each country. Oh, okay. You know, so, interesting. So for. America and Canada, it is your teeth falling out. So you're in the trendy Majority. dream category. But then like in Mexico, mm -hmm. it's an ex relationship. Oh, interesting. And Denmark it's president it's a presidency. <laughs> Pregnancy. <laughs> but wow. like in all of the UK, it's still teeth falling. It's like the still teeth what about Australia? Australia? Honey? It is teeth falling out. Wow. Okay. So maybe just the number one culturally universal uh -huh. dream is teeth falling out. N well, no. I would say out of the map, uh -huh. uh, it's snakes. Oh, okay. Like some of them is like Saudi Arabia is marriage, Iraq, but like and lots of pregnancies and whatnot. But there is a good amount that it's like, no, it's about. Wow. It's all about snakes because that's like a clear and present danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that it's wild? In the zeitgeist. Uh, very interesting. Gotta look it up. Haven't had a teeth falling out dream. Ever? That I can remember. Well, probably, but nothing as of lately. You know, in Libya, it's getting your hair cut. Ooh, ooh, that's kind of weird. That's a weird dream. If and you're also, not. It, if don't get near me. We're coming up on the anniversary. St. Patrick's Day of oh, me, yeah. me cutting Hannah's hair accidentally. That's right. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I guess that's a thing coming mm -hmm. up soon. Uh, In Argentina, it's spiders. spiders. Colombia, it's lice. Lice. Wow. Peru, it's rats. Makes sense. Okay. But so, yeah, it's just, it's, I thought it was very fascinating and that it's like, of course, United States, we're teeth, concerned teeth, teeth falling out. It's like about vanity and like. Same with the UK. <laughs> I mean, but those are all, those are already about to fall out. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They would admit it themselves. They Don't would say come it themselves. For me. So uh, anyway. I started watching Formula One is back. Wait, I haven't watched it. And now that makes me sad that Chip's on the road because we liked watching it together. I love it. I love it. I can't explain why I love it. I will say one interesting new development this season. Okay. Uh, did you watch the last season? Yes, but it's one of those you things. You don't remember till you no, see we, everyone. Well, we binged the first two seasons yeah. back to back like so fast okay. that I think I have like what happens when a yeah. little all over the place. I'll I, need to watch like the last two episodes to 
refresh yeah they and you really don't even it's just like the they refresh you on all the people as they go but the red bull guy who is this like british guy Mm -hmm. um who i remember being the narrator for like a lot of the last season his wife is jerry yeah ginger spice yeah she's she's on both what? seasons i never saw her last i only watched last season she's in like several episodes of the most recent they're like se- at home and they see their kids and stuff i didn't pick that up at all <laughs> Love this your season revelation. this season this- I, they were like wa- uh riding horses and i was like that's ginger no. spice last season she's Ugh. literally like rehearsing her song in a helicopter with him or I, something i missed because that she was going on tour missed it entirely i love this breaking news that it was already broken i thought i was like <laughs> seems jerry wants to get in on the popularity of formula one she's in a lot of these scenes this season that's so funny Look no if you go back go. and watch uh at least season two maybe season one yeah. like you'll see but like they don't i couldn't they it took don't me do a forever. big like can you believe my wife is no they don't ging- no it's just she was like that's jerry hollowell they put her name but they don't put hollowell they put her, her name as his last name which mm. is like horton or something and so i was like is that that is no it's not yes it is like just back and forth back and forth and oh, i yeah. googled it confirmed okay full circle mm-hmm. when the spice girls went on tour a yeah. couple years ago i remember people being like the sound was really bad like i don't know what was wrong mm. but they were like it was like very i don't know if it was who bailed out their sound systems or their venues but it was like too echoey and oh, like no. all crazy they should do a residency i would love that wouldn't that be so much fun someone said i'm not gonna be able to find it in time but someone sent us said there is a mashup of wannabe with <laughs> oh i don't doubt it it's a wannabe <laughs> yeah and it's <laughs> it mashes together so well that you don't recognize what the song is that this person's uh mashing it with until the very like last second of it oh, but i would watch it. that but yes a, a residency of the spice girls Ugh. Okay. Ugh. here it is okay yeah uh-huh 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 Go, go. I, we might get flagged. Yeah, that's perfect. I mean, that's perfect. So good. That's absolutely perfect. There's like uh, one of my favorites is a, a mashup of Rob Zombie. I think it's Rob Zombie and like B-52s. Like oh, give me so all good. of those like what I would call hardcore songs that even I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Popcorn. <laughs> That even I was like, you that know, hard pop where I'm like, look, I know you're like intense, but you sit through more makeup than I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not scared of you. OK, I think we need to start a Spice Girls petition Please. to do a Vegas. Re- I want everyone to because it's only I just want to see more shows now. And it's only it's only one very terrible hour flight away. Yeah, I so love it. I'd love Please. to go. Well, guys, if you want to see a show, come see us in Atlanta and Tampa the first week of uh, April. Yeah, it's so damn soon. We are in Atlanta at the Punchline on April 5th, and we are in Tampa at the uh -uh, on April 7th. So please, there are tickets left. Come support. We are going to have a lot of good fun, and I guarantee it's going to be weird because yes. we don't even know where our brains are at right now yep. we don't remember the show yep. so come watch the experiment <sighs> that got weird mm-hmm.